When they arrived home, their mother immediately saw in their faces what they had just done. In fear and horror, she screamed, Destroyer! Destroyer! You who came from my womb, clutching a black blood clot in your hand. To Kassar, you, like a wild dog, gnawing its own afterbirth. She screamed on and on, demonizing her children as animals with no control. Finally, she repeated what Begter had told them moments before. Now, you have no companion other than your shadow. Temujin was now the head of a household, but he was now also a murderer. Without the protection of anyone, he would have to decide how to survive. The Tayochid, who put them in this situation, considered themselves to be the lawgivers in the area, and set out to punish Temujin for what he had done. The clan sent out a small party to capture the boy murderer. Temujin attempted to flee, but was nevertheless captured and brought back to the Tayochid camp, a criminal and a slave. He was kept in the camp of the other slave families owned by the Tayochid, and strapped into a device, which restrained his hands and prevented him from doing anything for himself. However, the slave families treated him with great care and tended to the wounds created by the device. Temujin spent a great deal of time a slave, but this too would simply be another obstacle that he would overcome. Eventually, patience lended Temujin a way out. He was assigned to care for a simple-minded and incapable boy. He used the device which they had used to enslave him and struck the boy across the head, knocking him out cold. He immediately hid nearby the camp, knowing that he could not escape across a step on foot. That night, he found the family who had treated him kindly, and rather than report him, they fed him and provided him with a horse to escape with. Temujin was now sixteen, and it had been seven years since he had seen his wife Bort. He set out with the surviving half-brother Bogatui and found Bort's family. The family was happy to give him his wife, as she was now long past marriage age at seventeen. As was custom, the wife's family gave a gift alongside the bride, a prized black sable fur. Temujin decided to use the gift to create a needed alliance with his father's old ally, Onkong, the Khan of the Great Karyid tribe. At the time, the Mongol world was ruled by three large tribes. In the center was the Karyid, ruled by Onkong. To the west, the Naiman under Taeong Kong, and to the east were the Tartars under Altan Khan, who were vassals to the Jurchid of Manchuria. Onkong gladly accepted the gift and assumed the role of Temujin's father. But this did not signify an end to Temujin's struggles on the steppe. For the Merkid, who had long ago had their wife stolen from them by Temujin's father, now sought vengeance. However, they did not seek the old widow Holin as she was now, but Temujin's wife, Bort, who was still young and valuable as a wife. On one fateful morning, an old woman whom they had taken into the camp awoke to find the ground faintly vibrating. She immediately alerted the family. Temujin and his small but growing band of young men jumped on their horses and fled leaving his wife behind, knowing that she was the target of the raider's mission. He knew that he had no chance against them now, but that if he fled, he had the potential to gain the power necessary in the future. After fleeing the Merkid, Temujin prayed to Burkhan Khaldun, the mountain which had provided him cover from the prowling Merkid. He made thanks to the old woman who had saved them, and to the spirits that had allowed him to live. It was here that Temujin decided that he would not live the life of a leader of a small band of outcasts, constantly running from those more powerful than him. He would be the one who hunted down others. He returned to Onkon and explained that he wanted to launch a raid on the Merkid for what they had done to him. The Khan immediately agreed, for he had lingering problems with the Merkid, and saw this as a chance to settle those issues. The Khan sent Temujin on a mission to seek support from another ally, namely Jamuka, the sworn blood brother to Temujin. He immediately agreed to help his brother, under the order of his Khan. The three groups gathered together, with Jamaka leading his army to the east, and Ong leading his to the west. The force caught the Merkid by surprise, and swept down into the enemy's encampment before they had a chance to flee. The Merkid were in shambles. The panic, caused by the news of the attack arriving moments before they had arrived, caused the whole string of encampments to be easily overtaken and raided. While the raiders looted the girls of the enemy, Temujin raced from camp to camp, screaming for his wife. Bort had been loaded into a cart to flee, and had no idea who was attacking, much less that it was a raid with her as the objective. But she suddenly began to hear cries of her name from amid the turmoil that had surrounded her. She jumped from the cart and ran towards the voice. Temujin looked through the darkness of night, shouting her name when he saw her. Temujin then turned and said to the troops, 
We have made their breasts to become empty, and we have made their beds to become empty, and we have made an end of the men and their descendants, and we have ravished those who remained. The murkid people, being so dispersed, let us withdraw ourselves. Stay tuned to next week for Temujin's rise to power on the steppe. Support the channel on Patreon, and subscribe for weekly animated history videos.